Hey everyone, I'm Jens Ansø and these are my 10 essentials. So for this episode, I thought quite long and hard about should this be a travel essential or an everyday essential? And I actually realized it's the same thing. I'm a um, comfort kind of guy and I'm a traditional thinking kind of guy. I like to have everything that I might need during a day close at hand. It doesn't really matter if I'm traveling or I'm going to a local cafe or I'm just walking around the city. The essentials for me are the same regardless of where I am in the world. There's no differentiating between travel and everyday for me. These essentials are my 10 essentials. Notebook. That is probably my number one essentials. I don't go anywhere without it. This is where I jot down my thoughts, sketch out new product ideas, thoughts that I may have either regarding a new knife, a thought for the company, or just for my personal life. This is where everything goes in. I have a tendency to prefer moleskin, soft cover with the blank pages. This is just my personal preferences. This is almost filled out. I usually have them in two sizes, small, large. With a notebook, obviously a pen. Incidentally, this is just my favorite pen. I buy these by the box. It's a relatively cheap pen, two or three dollars. It's the Pilot BP Matic. My main reason why this is my favorite pen is it, it actually works when drawing very similar to a pencil. I can do shadings, I can do hard lines, but it's permanent. For me, drawing with a permanent line is super important. I would almost go as far as saying that an eraser is a banned object in my studio. The moment that you have an eraser, you start erasing some part of your drawing, you're losing part of the process. With a pen, you have to start over or you have to make a harder line. So with a pen, I can always document the full process. With an eraser, you lose your process. Obviously, I also carry other writing utensils. For instance, a nice pen. In this case, it's a prototype from Dmitry Sinkovich, one of my friends in the industry. Super cool little pen. I like to carry a mechanical pencil, a road ring in this case. This is just super cool in the way that the tip retracts so it doesn't break in your back. Really like the Cavego brass sports pen. So I always carry a bunch of pens. These are always my go-to. To me, a good watch is a super essential. In this case, it's my uh, Rolex GMT. I wear this on almost all my international travels. Just makes it super easy for me to keep track of time zone. I just got back from 10 days in the US. Just being able to tell by a glance what's the time uh, back home, super essential for me. I will call my family at least a couple of times a day uh, on FaceTime and just making sure we are on the same, uh, on the same understanding of what time is makes it so much easier. I actually gone so far as the moment I sit down in a plane, I will change the time to the local time, makes it easier for me to adjust. That's for travel, but I don't go anywhere without putting a, a good watch on my hand. Next essential is my earpods. Apple earpods are pro in this case. Probably one of my most important essential. I use them eight hours a day in the shop. The noise canceling function in them makes it uh, less needed for me to have uh, other ear protection. Super nice. Music, as you may have realized at this point, is super important for me. And having music in my ears or an, uh, an ebook is just part of my life. When I travel, these work so well. Add these uh, when I will grab a nap on the plane. I can close myself into my own little bubble. Super essential. I'm still analog when I travel, so I have this cable mess. When I watch movies on the plane, but um, I know you can get 
something fancy to connect your Bluetooth devices to the plane, but these works every time and always turn into a mess. So really the next essential probably should have been the first or the last. This is my uh, Filson messenger bag. All my essentials fit into this. This goes with me basically everywhere. For me, it's just a perfect carry. It can ride slim. It can actually fill out pretty good. I can have a little spare t-shirt. I can have my notebooks. I can have everything that we'll discuss later on. I will pack everything I need into this, bring to the kitchen when I'm working at night or around the world. This has been crossing the Atlantic at least 20 times by now. And uh, it just gets better with use. The handles get soft. The strap is nice and comfy. Super cool. With the Filson comes the, the remover suitcase. These goes together really well. This is a nice travel set for a couple of days or I bring it on on my longer trips as well as, as part of my hand luggage, just because I like to ride comfortable. I don't like to have 20 pounds on my shoulder, so I will stuff some things in here and the Filson will fit on top of the, the handle here after a little mud that I did to the design. So before this little mud, the bag will just flub around, but this is just such an easy and comfortable piece of luggage when I walk around in the airport or New York, Copenhagen, wherever I might be. I can't recommend these two brands enough. Filson, awesome gear, suitcase from Remova. Not cheap, but they're not expensive considering what you get. This has been with me for, I like to say 10 years by now, and it will last at least my lifetime. And you can just repair them if needed. I'm very particular about how I decorate my stuff, how I use my stuff, how I bring things around. Traditionally speaking, removers have always been packed with stickers and of course mine will as too. I just have a few rules for myself. They need to be black and white. They need to have a personal meaning for me. This was from a small restaurant in Japan that I visited that I just had a super great time. This was driving from Northern Washington state and passing a place that just had wonderful coffee. Obviously I put coffee. Crud is a great Swedish brand for high, high quality leather gloves. Vox Anso, sticker from uh, the company I have with uh, Jim and Jesper, John Mouse. And of course there's no rule without an exception. So yes, I do have one sticker with color on it from one of my favorite comics uh, called Dunst from a, a friend I have in, in Norway who does a great comic book. So, Remova, pure essential. One super essential thing for me has become uh, pouches. In this particular case, it's a pouch by Adam Savage's company, Savage Industries, Reclaim Sales which is super rigid, strong. So I will have charging cables, adapters, stuff like that. This is uh, my watch tools. I have this from Filson's. This is my travel kit. So I will have my traveling plans. Yeah, I print, I'm old, thank you. I'll have uh, invoices. I will have my passport in a Greg Stevens notebook cover but uh, works super well for passports. While traveling, I counted my American stamps. In this passport alone, there's 24. So that means that I've been to the US 50, 60 times by now. Oh yeah, cash of course, with my vintage gangster money clip, gold plated of course. That's very godfather of you, Jens. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even sure what you call this in English. In Danish, it's penalhus. But uh, pens, stuff to write with. I've come to really, really enjoy having these pouches and I enjoy making kits. Makes things super organized, easy to find in your Filson bag and um, just makes things a lot easier. 
by having kids like that, it seems like uh, you like to be organized. Why is that? Yeah, uh, I'm sort of a control freak to a certain degree. I love being organized. I hate looking for stuff. And trust me, I have done that quite a bit. I got back home New Year's Eve at 2 a.m. one time several years ago to a frozen water pipe in the basement. Water everywhere and no heat on the, on the house. The repair itself took 30 minutes, but I spent two and a half hours looking for the right tool <laughs> in the middle of the night. <laughs> I like being organized. That's one of those life lessons that will make you be a little more organized. Books are super essential for me. I read quite a bit. I will read new stuff. I will return to old stuff all the time. Here I have probably one of my favorite authors, Swedish author named Jan Gilu, who writes about 1980s, 1990s spy literature. Super, super interesting for me. And this particular one I've read at least 10 times. Oh yeah, and it's signed by the author. I met him for the first time six months ago at a book fair, but I've read these books for 30 years. I don't go anywhere without bringing a book. It just makes so much more sense to me to read a book rather than look in my phone, which I have a tendency to also do <laughs> quite a bit. So having a book actually allows me to distance myself to social media and all that crap. Another favorite author of mine is Murakami. This is also my favorite book of his, Kafka on the Beach. A little uh, high level literature, even for me. <laughs> Just super interesting. I love how he writes. This one, it's uh, Sen and the Other of Motorcycle Repairs. I've only read it once, but that took something like 20 years to actually manage to get through. It's a little long winded. When I finally finished it, it was such a great pleasure because it's super interesting. I always buy books, so these are just my recent purchased books on uh, on this last trip to the US. I even went as far as buying a new duffel bag just so, so I could fit more <laughs> books. I love books. Never go anywhere without it. Glasses. I've been wearing glasses for 40 plus years and I'm nearsighted and while I wouldn't say that I'm blind without glasses, it's close. So I don't go anywhere without an extra pair of glasses just in case. I will change glasses during the day as well. These are from a Danish brand called Ergrain. I wear progressive lenses. Well, if you're 40 plus, you know why. <laughs> <laughs> One of my recent essential has become uh, sunglasses. Just because I've never been able to get uh, some nice sunglasses with uh, my prescription lenses in them that I really liked until I got these from Pesol. These are just super comfortable and they look cool. I've actually only once during my entire lifetime had the need for an, an extra pair of glasses, but that's just the way I am. I would rather drag these around, uh, around with me than, and not need them than be in a situation and need them and don't have them. It would literally ruin my entire day or trip if something happened to my glasses. For my next essentials, I have a camera. The past 10 years, I guess, or so, I've been, I've been carrying an iPhone. Great pictures. Just lacking just a little bit. So I dragged this around for a long time, a Canon 5D, which is a fantastic camera. This is what I use to shoot all my product photography, but it's what, six pounds? If you need another lens, that's another pound and a half or so. And I just found myself not bringing this to all my great trips. I love city photography and I love the pictures that I shot with this. I just found myself leaving it at home. So recently I bought this Leica Q2 and this has very fast become very, very important, essential for me. It's lightweight, it's compact, and it takes really, really sweet pictures. And I'm just learning. Let's just be honest. I shoot everything on automatic. 
I don't know enough about photography to mess around with this. At least not yet. This camera has actually made me want to learn more just because I can see what it will do for me to know more about proper photography. But Automatic has actually done quite well for me in the, in the past years. So, a good camera. In this case, the Leica Q2. An essential for me has for a very long time been a pocket talisman or a pocket fidget thing. I don't like fidget. Just the word fidget makes me ugh. I carry a coin, a brass chess piece that I bought in Germany once time. Either something that I will fondle around with. This is a mouse from our company Giant Mouse. This is a Fibonacci coin piece from my friend Derek at Steel Flame. Just something that um, has a little tactile feel. It has some weight to it. I like to funnel around with it. This is a new project from my friend Lucas and Derek at Steel Flame Mini Subas. This is the best idea ever. I love it. Makes me think a little better when I funnel one of these. It's one of those things that doesn't really serve a specific purpose, but it serves a big purpose regardless. For my 10th essential. What kind of episode would this be without a knife? Of course, a knife is an essential for me. I don't go anywhere without a knife either on me or with me. Obviously, traveling with knives can be a little challenging, but uh, I would at least have one in my check bag so I can have a knife on me when I get to my destination. When traveling and in general, I actually prefer a slip joint type knife. It just makes so much sense in the way that it will take care of most any of my cutting needs and it kind of flies under the radar. This is legal just about everywhere to carry, which is something that you have to actually take pretty serious. So in this case, it's a custom casino. I don't always wear a custom. Sometimes I like to carry a knife that is less sentimental value for me or just less valuable for me in case I lose it. Often I will find myself carrying one of the um, O230 Zero Tolerance designed by me. Also a slip joint mechanism. Your preferred knife to travel with, what would that be? For traveling, I would almost all the time go with a slip joint knife or a slip joint like mechanism. Technical, this is not a, a slip joint, but for me, the meaning slip joint means that it's a non locking folder. This goes very under the radar in most parts of the world, even highly strict areas for. For knife carry. It serves most any purpose that I have for a knife, especially in an urban environment. And it's not that I need a knife on me at all times, but I need a knife on me at all times. So I would rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. If I'm traveling somewhere where I would go hiking or go do some work, then I know that I will have some work for a knife, I will usually bring a locking folder. And that could be, again, it could be a custom design like my, my Haddock. Even though it's locking, it still rides somewhat under the radar uh, in that it's a two-hand open knife. Or I will bring a one of my production designs. This is a design I did together with Jesper Vox for our company Giant Mouse. This is one of the, the GM blades. I choose what I what I carry depending on what I intend to do. So going hiking, definitely I would choose a, a locking folder and preferable also a, a knife with a little more length to the blade. You carry a locking folder in case you meet a bear or a cougar when you're on a hike or? Yeah, so I will carry a locking folder you know, just to feel a little more secure so I can go hand-to-hand -hand combat with a <laughs> grizzly bear in case I need to do that. At least I will die smiling or just die <laughs> screaming. I don't know. I, I recently went on a hike uh, a few hours north of Seattle in the North Cascades and being in the mountains, in the woods, knowing that it's bear country, cougar country and getting back without seeing any of those. I was like 50-50 mixed between a little disappointed and super relieved, but 
I definitely carry the locking, a locking blade for that. That was another version of this actually. It made me feel probably insecurely safe, but also if I got stuck in a, a cave somewhere, I could cut off my own leg if, if need be. So this was my 10 essentials. It was actually hard for me to boil it down to 10 essentials. So here you'll have a few more coffee. I don't function well without coffee. I love my coffee. I love good quality coffee. It makes me a little sad to drink bad coffee and there's so much bad coffee out there. I will bring snacks everywhere. Snacks are essential for me. These are granola bars, some raw fruit bar, somewhat semi-healthy snacks will do, but I have a tendency to get cranky if I don't have snacks handy. Oh, don't I know it. <laughs> also, I don't eat plain food. I'm not snobby or anything. Well, maybe I'm a little bit, but pasta or chicken, come on. I fly to the US at least four times a year. I go traveling with my family. Oh, airplane food is not good for you. I'll do everything I can to, to eat a healthy big meal before getting onto an airplane. But traveling for 10, 12 hours, you need some snacks for sure. And then licorice. I have to have licorice. This is Dutch kind van Schluten. Danish licorice is better though. We have licorice that says on the box, not suited for children. Salty licorice, I love it. So licorice, essential. So I'm relatively old. I grew up with vinyl, had a big break from vinyl. So I got back into vintage hi-fi and vinyl a few years ago. And that's just something to be said about vinyl that I just love it. One of my everyday essentials is my credit card holder. This is my Matrix credit card holder that we make here in the, in the shop. Made from titanium and will hold six, seven cards. I don't carry cash around all that much. So this is, is super essential for me. So last but not least, I love me a good hoodie. I'm a little particular about what I like to wear. When I find a brand that I like, I will usually stick to it. This is a Swedish brand called Klettermusen or the Climbing Mouse. It's just a super nice quality and I basically live in a hoodie, especially when I'm traveling. This is part of my favorite gear and certainly an essential. This was my 10 plus essentials. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, remember to press like wherever you do that. Subscribe to see more and um, maybe even follow me on Instagram at Anso of Denmark. I would love to hear your comments below if you liked or disliked or if you have suggestions or other comments. In any case, I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you next time.